Welcome to the 2022 President and CEO Summit Address and Awards Presentation. Please welcome Climate National League for Nursing President and CEO, Dr. Beverly Malone. Climate change issue is one that affects every nurse because we take care of patients and we're devoted, dedicated to that. And there's no separation between climate change and the health care that we deliver to patients. There are about 4.5 million of us, and we are at every healthcare door you can open. So we have to be vigilant, and we have to understand that we are part of this healthcare system that climate change is affecting drastically. We have children who are more affected by asthma because where they live, where they sleep, where they play, where they go to school. And that then becomes a nursing issue as we care for those those young people, their only way to advocate for our patients is to make sure that we understand the damaging effects of climate change. And it's going to take all of us together to make this happen in terms of, and when I say make this happen is to reduce the effect of climate change. The National Academy of Medicine has more impact and the ability to be seen and heard and understood by the nation than any other organization that I can name. And so it becomes essential that we take on this effort. Colleagues, I appreciate that applause because it's not about me, it's about nursing being a face and voice for the National Academy of Medicine and to be recognized in that way. And it just means that the door needs to be open more widely at NAM, used to be ICN, no, no, used to, what, what did it used to be? IOM, yes, IOM. Um, it needs to be open more widely for nurses. And we need to, if the door doesn't open, we need to carve a new door. <laughs> Thank you colleagues for joining us this year. <laughs> at InnoLens Education Summit in Las Vegas. It's a pleasure and honor to have you here. It really is, I'm so delighted. As you know, our theme is healthy planet, healthy people, leading the way through education practice and policy. The video you just watched was from an interview of me by the National Academy of Medicine Action Collaborative on decarbonizing the US healthcare sector. This is a national initiative that brings together leaders and institutions across healthcare who are committed to advancing climate solutions to protect the health and well-being of the nation. I, along with other leaders, including representatives from the American Hospital Association and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, as well as other education and industry leaders, have been working hard to inform the public about the health risk posed by a changing climate and the connection this has to our personal health and the health of our environment. Together we are speaking out about the impact of climate change on communities, nurses, and the patients we serve. Climate change has even affected where we have gathered here today. Just a few weeks ago, during the monsoon season, the Las Vegas Strip, including several casinos and hotels and even the airport, were flooded due to heavy rains and high winds. Though I am grateful that the mirage was spared so that we could hold the summit, still it is fair to say that storms in any season are frequently outside the norm as our new reality. And our colleagues in Florida is a testament to that. Now you may say to yourself, isn't the American Southwest currently in a historic drought? Wasn't that rain badly needed for energy production and crops and drinking water? Well, yes, colleagues, but the issue isn't a normal drought or a normal rainstorm. It's the extreme drought 
or extreme rainstorm happening with increasing frequency that has become so concerning and so detrimental to our health. We as nurses and nurse educators have an opportunity to lead now on the issue of climate change. It is increasingly apparent that there is no separation, none at all, between climate change and the health care we provide to patients. Climate change also affects every nurse and every patient, basically every individual on planet Earth. There is no escaping it, although some people are thinking about other planets right now. I'm sorry, it's not there yet. But I am a psych nurse, so if you think you might want to go to another planet, I have seen that behavior in a number of my clients. <laughs> From the North Pole to the South Pole, we are seeing historic ice melt, historic heat waves, historic rainstorms and flooding, you name it. We live in unprecedented times, colleagues, and those times call for an unprecedented response. Here is why we as nurses and nurse educators must lead on climate. First, the science is clear. Climate change is one of the most serious threats to human health we have ever faced. And as nurses, it is our duty to do our best to help provide our patients, families, and communities with a safe and healthy future. Next, we know that some of the most at-risk populations in America are children, older adults, minorities, marginalized, and under-resourced communities that frequently includes rural areas. The burden of pollution and climate change often falls unfairly on these populations, which creates health disparities. Finally, climate change harms our water supply, air quality, food sources, and mental health. It also increases the occurrence of vector-borne diseases and causes extreme, as I mentioned before, weather events. These are called the social determinants of health. And the National League for Nursing has been a leader in addressing them. Last year, along with Walden University, we launched the Institute for Social Determinants of Health and Social Change. Housed in the NLN Center for Transformational Leadership, this collaboration with Walden, a university dedicated to affecting positive social change represents a commitment to supporting professional development for nurse educators and interprofessional colleagues so they can, number one, become leaders and catalysts of social change, number two, cultivate appropriate leadership competencies to integrate social change into our programs, number three, three, incorporate social determinants of health into our practice programs and our curriculum or curriculum across pre-licensure and graduate studies. And number four, engage in research and other scholarly activities related to the social determinants of health and social change with a view toward broad dissemination. The five-year timeline for the Institute will build toward a two-day interprofessional conference on social determinants of health and social change. The conference will highlight the Institute's accomplishments and present research and innovations in social de determinants of health and social change to help professionals from nursing education and practice, public health, social work, and mental health. And that is not all inclusive. I am pleased to report that the work of the Institute has already begun. And the recent hosting of an orientation for the first ever class of the Institute's Leadership Academy, which will bring about positive social change through focused professional development. Led by Dr. Sandra Davis, Deputy Director of the Institute, 
The year ahead for the Academy's members will feature planned activities focused on scholarly writing, research, curriculum development, and building leadership competencies. Competencies. The world is headed, has to be headed toward competency-based learning, competency-based healthcare. These are all designed to facilitate their leading role in preparing future caregivers to provide outstanding culturally sensitive care while focusing on systems and structures that advance the health of our nation and the global community. Colleagues, you don't need me to remind you that the Gallup poll annually rates nurses as the most trusted professionals in the United States. We are credible and influential professionals who can both discuss how climate change impacts health and develop and implements solutions that protect and promote health. Yesterday, we heard from that giant, Dr. Barbara Sattler, keynote speaker and a winner, a recent winner of this year's President's Award. She challenged all of us to consider what the purpose of having the most trusted voices is. Colleagues, if we don't use our voices to advocate for solutions that address health and well-being, how can we be called excellent nurse educators? You know, I think about me greeting you and saying, oh, so you're not an excellent nurse educator? And you say, I beg your pardon, Dr. Malone? Well, what are you doing about climate? It has to be part of excellence. So I won't say that, but colleagues, when you see me, I'll be thinking it, so you know, just look inside my head. I joined Barbara on her call to action. So, what are the next steps? First of all, visit our new website, nln.org. Very simple, nln.org. For instance, you will learn about all what the NLN is doing to address these issues. Just this week, we released a new vision statement called Climate Change and Health. The NLN is issuing a bold call to nurse educators and other key stakeholders to take action <laughs> against the adverse effects of climate change on personal, communal, and world health. You will find a detailed analysis of the many ways that climate change has impacted and will continue to negatively impact key aspects of global health. The statement also includes an outline of recommendations for the league, for nurse educators, deans and directors, nurses in practice, and policymakers and advocates. Read the statement at nln.org. And while you are there, be sure to check out the Climate Resource Center. Here you will find resources and opportunities for you, including a link to the Institute for Social Determinants of Health and Social Change, which has a wealth of reference material you can use. Resources and information are also there, highlighting nursing and healthcare groups, reports, and guides. A taking action section on ways you can make a direct impact today and news articles about how public-private partnerships are addressing climate change issues. The simple fact of your being here at this year's NLN Summit that is focused on climate change and the environment means so very much. Take the next few days to learn as much as you can about these issues, then take back what you have learned to your schools and programs and become an ambassador for a healthy planet and a healthy people. It is time for us to reimagine or dream a new way to convert these climate challenges into opportunities. Dreaming is a prerequisite for a power move. 
but did you hear me? Dreaming is a prerequisite for a power move. And to mitigate the effects of climate, power moves are essential. So I wanted to share my dream story with you. It involves my time as general secretary, similar to a CEO for the Royal College of Nursing in England. It covers, Royal College of Nursing covers England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. It has more than 400,000 nurses in it. On behalf of the RCN, I was invited by His Royal Highness Prince Charles at the time to a dinner event at Highgrove, his country estate in England. While my organization was totally thrilled, I, I was less than thrilled. I thought a dinner at Buckingham Palace would be more elegant <laughs> than going to the countryside. But I went anyway. When I arrived, it was raining, and one of the men's servants asked if I would like to tour his Royal Highness's garden. Well, it was outside. My shoes were brand new. And did I mention it was raining? So I gently declined. I have not been known to wear new shoes into a muddy garden at any time. I was escorted into the inner courtyard and moved quickly into one of eight pods, each of them with about 10 fellow guests. Prince Charles, then spent time with each pod while we gave our elevator speech about our organization. Fortunately, I gave my one minute performance early and then I had an opportunity to wander around the inner garden area. And colleagues, I must admit, <laughs> I was very impressed with the evidence of all the charitable and entrepreneurial activities of His Royal Highness. As I was standing lost deep in thought, while I revised my opinion of Prince Charles, a manservant approached me and inquired if I would like to have dinner with His Royal Highness. I said, of course, that's why I'm here. And I thought to myself, along with 79 other people, he said, I don't think you understand, Dr. Malone. His Royal Highness would like for you to join him for dinner at his table. There followed a heavy silence. And finally I responded with, why? <laughs> the gentleman almost smiled and said his royal highness liked interesting people. Well, colleagues, I easily fit into that category. <laughs> I was the first non-Brit they'd ever had, the first American they ever had, and the first African-American to be in my role. I considered that to fulfill the requirements for interesting. At his table, I realized what an incredible opportunity and challenge I had with this window for emphasizing the importance of nursing and our commitment to caring for people, families, and communities. I knew I had to say something memorable and meaningful. After all, I'm an extraordinary psychiatric mental health nurse. I struggled, <laughs> but nothing came to mind. So I relied on Nursing 101. Tell me about your day. And he did. I've never had anybody refused. He gets up and dresses himself. I gave him a round of applause in my mind. He has to exercise due to a back injury developed while playing polo. And then he begins an extraordinary full day reflecting his commitment to homeopathic medicine as well as issues related to climate. He also knew that the world was approaching the edge of a climate cliff and without advocacy and intervention would crash over the cliff. I was impressed, and suddenly I knew exactly what I wanted to ask him. So I said to him, where do you dream? He looked at me very seriously and said to me, no one had ever asked him that question. 
And colleagues, inside my heart, I said, yes. I, I mean, I was so thrilled because I figured he's going to remember this. He then answered and said his garden. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I knew colleagues that it wasn't the inner court paved garden he meant, but that outside muddy one that I had chosen intentionally to avoid because of my brand new shoes. Today, someone has already labeled King Charles III as the climate king. We are on the right road, colleagues, but we need to dream and reimagine nursing education within the context of this new world. And we have partners who can help us dream big. It is a universal cause to save the planet. We just need to be in a position of bringing the best that nursing has to the table. And if folks don't let us at the table, we need to build a table to make sure our people understand we are committed. Please let me continue. I wanted to just make sure you knew how important I thought climate was. Even as the NLN has focused on the climate, we have focused on many other things too. We, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm proud to say that the Issues are related to, continue to be a leader on issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, for example. The Taking AIM initiative, structural racism, diversity, equity, inclusion, implicit bias, and social justice, was just honored with a prestigious power of a gold award from ASAE, the American Society of Association Executives. Sort of a la-di-da organization. We could not have earned this achievement without the support of AMN, healthcare, and Elsevier Nursing and Health Education partners. As you may know, the Taking AIM initiative has been producing a series of webinars and online resources developed and presented by thought leaders and scholars in nursing to number one, enable nurse educators to become better informed about the impact of structural racism, diversity and inclusion, and equity on nursing education. Number two, address the impact of stru structural racism on social determinants of health. Number three, create a safe forum for nurse educators to openly dialogue about sensitive issues of bias and racism in nursing education and healthcare. And number four, offer strategies for classroom and clinical instruction to best prepare new nurses to encounter and diffuse structural racism in themselves and on the job. But that's not all, colleagues. Did you know that 2022 is the year of the nurse educator? I always say if nobody recognizes you, Toot your own horn. He or she who tooteth not will not be acknowledged. So NLN is tooting the horn for nursing education. In January, we declared 2022 as the year of the nurse educator. Now, why did we do this? Well, colleagues, nurse educators are primarily responsible for the preparation of a diverse, culturally competent, and outstanding nursing workforce for the national and global communities. Simply put, nurse educators deserve recognition, not just for rising to intervene in the pandemic, but also in celebration of our historic and continuing inspiration to nurses everywhere. We know that the major obstacles to reversing the shortage of nurses is a lack of nurse educators and clinical placements available for hands-on learning. So one of the responses to the nursing shortage is to encourage more nurses to earn an advanced degree to enter nursing education and for masters and doctoral prepared nurses to join the ranks of NLN certified nurse educators, the badge of expertise in this specialty area of practice. 
Another one of our initiatives this year has been to call for nominations for Nurse Educators of the Year Awards. And I'm proud to say that we have selected five winners. Going in alphabetical order, by last name, our first winner is Linda Flynn of Rutgers School of Nursing. Now, I have to admit a conflict of interest. I am a graduate. It is my alma mater, so yeah, yeah. And they still claim me, so I'm, I'm totally excited. Our next winner is Jessica, Jessica Oaks of Indicott College. Jessica? Our next winner is Tammy Spencer of the University of Colorado School of College of Nursing. Our next winner is Alum Talk of Helene Full College of Nursing. Our final winner is Cheryl Taylor of Allied Health, Southern University, and A&M College. Cheryl. <laughs> is there a nurse in the house? <laughs> now let's hear from them in their own words what this honor means to them. I am deeply honored to be recognized by this award. I want to first thank my amazing colleagues at Rutgers University School of Nursing who nominated me for this award. I am truly humbled and very grateful. To paraphrase W.B. Yeats, education is not just filling the pot with content, but it's the lighting of a fire. That is what my amazing faculty colleagues and I try to do. Light the fire of learning so that our students become the best nurses, the best advanced practice providers, and the best nurse scientists that they can be. Again, thank you so much for this high honor. this prestigious award is an honor and a privilege. It means a recognition of a lifelong journey of learning and hard work. And not just my own, but all nurse educators. What we do every day is worthy of superhero status. We educate, we inspire, we nurture, we empathize, care, communicate, collaborate. We are the stewards of future generations of nurses. I am constantly inspired by my students, patients, and colleagues. It is my love of patient care, advocacy, and desire for social justice that inspired me to enter nursing education and continues to inspire me every day to be the best educator that I can be. So thank you very much for this award. I am so grateful. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so humbled. And when you think about receiving an award like this, of course you think of the people that inspired you, right, to um, do this work. And your health assessment builds on your pharmacology. My parents really, you know, instilling in us the places you could go with an education. And they were both educators, so they were role models for me. You all will talk about that with pharmacology because blood pressure medications act on that, right? But my students, oh my students, they, they give me such inspiration. The stories that they have, that they bring to the classroom, um, you just can't help but be motivated and energized by them. And there's no greater joy than being in the classroom with them and watching that light bulb go off. Like, ah, oh, they get it, and I was a part of that. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you to the National League for Nursing for this wonderful recognition and my colleagues and our provost, Dr. Sandy Curlow. Most of you have that image of an educator who had a major impact in your life. 
Dr. Joyce Griffin Sobel is a president of Helen Bird College of Nursing and a lifelong mentor. I met her when I was an undergrad student where she was a dean of a program. While struggling to juggle between language barrier and surviving through school, she wrote me a Christmas card that read, you are going to be a wonderful nurse. That message was a turning point for me and I decided to become a nursing educator to pay it forward. At this present time, we may not know the impact of our work, but just know that your encouragement matters, your presence matters. Thank you again for this award and thank you my fellow educators for what you do. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, I declare thanks to the NLN for shining your light on nurse educators this year and thank you all for accessing and letting your lights shine for students everywhere. Greetings with love and light from the deep south. As an HBCU nurse educator, I see potential in all students, whether their performance is passing with honors, barely passing, or failing. Helping students to access their own light and letting it shine is my open-hearted way of offering peace in chaos, clarity in confusion, and hope in despair. Which is the best way forward? Nursing students are the precious jewels in the crown of nursing, and we all have a part in this brilliant love light. Nursing educators, who else but us could be expert teachers and expert students at the same time? So let your light shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you. Quite phenomenal, colleagues. Thank you so very much. Let's give them another resounding round of applause. Colleagues, thank you again for the great work you are doing as nurse educators and as leaders of our profession. We are proud that you have earned this recognition from your peers and from those you teach. And my thanks to all of you for being here, each and every one of you in this room, for being here during such an important time in our history. And thank you, as always, for being NLN members and for allowing me the privilege of being a part of the National League for Nursing. The stakes are indeed high. Your scholarship, leadership, and compassion are needed now more than ever. Thank you. I thought I could escape after that, but uh, they closed and locked the door. <laughs> now we move to the presentation of the 2022 NLN Nursing Education Research Grants Awards, the Nursing Education Perspectives Award, the NLN Foundation Scholarships, the NLN Home Instead Scholarships, and the NLN Constituent League Award. I will now turn this over to Dr. Susan Luperal, 
chair of the NLN's research, research grants review panel. Susan. Thank you, Dr. Malone. Good morning, everybody. Friends, good to see you again. Um, as you all know, one of the NLN's goals is to advance the science of nursing education by promoting evidence-based nursing education research and the scholarship of teaching. And one of the most visible ways we meet this goal is through our research grants program, an initiative of the NLN Chamberlain University Center for the Advancement of the Science of Nursing Education. The grants are awards are funded by the NLN and the NLN Foundation for Nursing Education. For more than 20 years, the NLN Research Grants Program has funded more than 159 research projects, distributing over, and are you ready for this, 1.5 million in research awards. Yep. So I am now pleased to present awards that support six outstanding research proposals and two doctoral dissertation awards. But first, on behalf of the NLN, I would like to thank the members of the Nursing Education Research Review Panel and the NLN members who served as grant proposal reviewers this year. If you're in the audience, would you please stand and be acknowledged? So now it's my honor to present the 2022 NLN Research and Nursing Education grant recipients, and I ask that each grant recipient or their designee join us on stage as I call their names and read the titles of their research studies. Doctors Denise Campbell, Betty Mariani, and Gina Ziegler of the University of Michigan Flint School of Nursing, Villanova, uh, Vill Villanova University College of Nursing, excuse me, and Macaulay Brown Inc have received the Dorothy Otto Research Award for their research project titled Management of Distractions for Safe Medication Administration, a Multi-Site Study. Congratulations, Dr. Mariani, who is accepting the award on behalf of her colleagues. We continue to be so grateful for the continuing impact on nursing education research, thanks to Do Dr. Dorothy Otto's uh, gift to the NLN. Next, Drs. Jessica Dron Moret, Piri Ackerman Barger, Amy Nichols, Jennifer Edwards, and KT Waxman of the University of California Davis School of Nursing, uh, oops, lost my place, sorry, uh, have received, and the University of California San Francisco School of Nursing, sorry, have received the Ruth Donnelly Corcoran Research Award for their project titled Exploring Inclusive Teaching Practices During Simulation Experiences. Congratulations to Drs. Nickel and Wa Nichols and Waxman who are accepting the award on behalf of their colleagues. <laughs> the Nancy Langston Research Award is presented to Drs. Donna Badowski, Kelly Rossler, Letitia Gill Gambala, and Nancy Ryland of DePaul University School of Nursing, Baylor University School of Nursing, Temple University College of Public Health, and Lewis University College of Nursing and Health Science for their study titled Teaching Motivational Interview Interviewing Skills to Pre-Licensure Nursing Students, a comparison study of simulated telehealth, simulation gaming technology, and traditional clinical learning environments. Congratulations, Drs. Badowski, Rossler, Gil Bengala, and Ryland. The NLN Foundation and Edmund J.Y. Pajarillo Research Award is presented to Drs. Kathleen Amon Morales, Modupe Hadaway, Cynthia Johnson, Re and Rebecca G. of the University of West Georgia Tanner Health School of Nursing. Kennesaw State University School of Nursing, Middle Georgia State University School of Health and Natural Sciences for their study titled Digital Approach to Dementia Care Education. Funds for this new award are made possible from a generous gift from Dr. Edmund J.Y. Pajarillo. Congratulations, Dr. Morales and Hadaway, who are accepting the award on behalf of their colleagues, and they are joined on stage by Dr. Pajarillo.
doctoral candidate Heather Guest from the University of Texas at Tyler School of Nursing doctoral program is being awarded for her study, Trauma-Informed Care in Nursing Curricula, Development of a Simulation-Based Education Framework for Health Professions. She is the recipient of the Marianne Rizzolo Doctoral Research Award, which is awarded for dissertation or D to NP research with a focus on simulation. Funds for this award are made possible from a generous gift from Dr. Marianne Rizzolo. Congratulations, Ms. Guest. Dr. Rizzolo is on stage to accept the award on her behalf. Next, it is my honor to present the co-sponsored research awards for 2022. The first is for Vincenza Coughlin, a doctoral student at the Adelphi University College of Nursing and Public Health, and from New York University Langone Health, who has received the NLN Sigma Foundation for Nursing Diane Billings Research Award. Her study is titled, Examining Content and Construct Validity of the NYU Langone Health Nursing Education and Competency Algorithm. We continue to be so grateful for our partnership with the Sigma Foundation, which joins with the NLN to advance the science of nursing education. Funds for this award are made possible from a generous gift from Dr. Diane Billings. Congratulations, Ms. Coughlin. The next co-sponsored research award goes to Dr. Sarah Beebe, who was a doctoral candidate at the time of submission from the George Washington University School of Nursing, who has received the NLN Eastern Nursing Research Society Doctoral Research Award. Her study is titled Reflecting on Diagnosis, Factors Associated with Diagnostic Reasoning in Family Nurse Practitioner Students. We're grateful to the ENRS for joining with the NLN to fund this award, and congratulations, Dr. Beebe. The final co-sponsored research award goes to Dr. Toyin Olukotun and Erica Bailey from the University of Portland School of Nursing and Health Innovations, who have received the inaugural NLN Western Institution of Nursing Research Award. Their study is titled BIPOC Students' Experiences with Social Justice Content in the Classroom. We're grateful to the win for joining with the NLN to fund this award. Although they, though they are unable to join us today, we congratulate Dr. Olakotun and Ms. Bailey. Once again, congratulations to each of these outstanding NLN research grant recipients. <laughs> I'm now pleased to continue with the Nursing Education Perspectives Best Article Awards. The editorial board for the NLN Research Journal, Nursing Education Perspectives, offers a best article award for three categories of articles published during the previous year. Primary research article, research brief, and innovation center article. I would like to remind everyone at this opportune time that the Nursing Education Perspectives is a benefit of your NLN membership and you can find that on the journal's website at neponline.net. Also on stage will be Dr. Barbara Patterson, editor of NEP. Here are the best article winners for articles published in 2021. For the main research article category, congratulations to Todd, Todd Tardivool and Jessica Landry for their article, Educating Nursing Students About Delivering Culturally Sensitive Care to Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Questioning Queer, Intersex Plus Patients, the impact of an advocacy program on knowledge and attitudes in the July-August issue. <laughs> For the research briefs category, congratulations to Jessica Gay and Christina Phillips for their article, Classroom Concepts in the Clinical Setting, Student Perceptions of Concept Cards, published in the May-June issue. And finally, for the Innovation Center category, congratulations to Kathy Katz and her co-authors for their article, An Innovative Model Integrating an Academic Practice Partnership in an RNBSN Program, published in the November-December issue. Let's please give a big round of applause to these award recipients.
And now, on a sadder note, the world of nursing, veterans, and healthcare recently lost a champion, Donald Jonas, the visionary founder of the Jonas Philanthropies. He and the Jonas Philanthropies have been strong supporters of the NLN Jonas Scholars Program, and we extend our sincere condolences and sympathies to the Jonas family. In recognition of his wonderful legacy, though, I would like to congratulate the 12th Jonas Scholars Cohort for 2022-2023, which is supported from a grant by the Jonas Philanthropies. The cohort includes Elizabeth Cuniff, University of North Co Northern Colorado, Carly Kearney from Widener University, Megan Leapsight, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and Teresa Schnabel from Marquette University. Will these current Jonas Scholars, as well as any past Jonas Scholars, please stand for a round of applause. <laughs> and now it is my distinct honor to present the 2022 NLN Foundation for Nursing Education Scholarships. Dr. Patrick Robinson, NLN Foundation Chair, will join Drs. Poindexter and Malone on stage to present the scholarship awards. Every year, the NLN Foundation for Nursing Education offers scholarships of up to $8,000 to nurses pursuing advanced degrees to advance their careers as full-time nurse educators. This year, Health Carousel, a leader in healthcare staffing and workforce solutions, partnered with the foundation to fund an additional three scholarships. In alignment with the NLN core value and missions, the foundation encourages more experienced and ethnically diverse nurses to pursue advanced degrees to prepare for full-time positions as nurse educators. Applicants are from accredited programs who have completed at least one year of their academic studies. The NLN is proud to be the only nursing member organization that provides scholarships specifically to nurse educators at all levels. This year, the NLN Foundation is pleased to recognize 15 outstanding scholarship recipients. They are Priksha Anuforo from Duquesne University. Anna Boneberg from Columbia University. Lisa Hesser, the University of West Georgia. Shema Omorlorlu, University of Cincinnati. <laughs> Lisa Pugsley, the University of West Georgia. Kristen Schaub from Messiah University. <laughs> Shannon Smith from the University of South Carolina. Jolene Chepko-Rear 
from Johns Hopkins University. Those unable to join us today include Gail Hansen Brenner from the University of Northern Car uh, Colorado. Jolene has arrived. Lori Connors, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Karen Geiger from Johns Hopkins University. Dominique Guillaume from Johns Hopkins University. Rosaline J uh, Jean Lewis from Emory University. Anne Jeanette Pong from the University of St. Augustine. And Gina Rob Robertiello from New York University. Congratulations again to our NLN Foundation for Nursing Education Scholarship recipients. We're confident that their work, we're confident that their work will have a major impact on nursing education in the years ahead. Now for the fifth year in a row, the foundation partnered with Home Instead to foster and promote geriatric education through a $10,000 scholarship fund for nursing students. These scholarships are known as the NLN Home uh, Instead Scholarship Awards. We are pleased to announce that five scholarship winners who are unable to join us today were selected to prepare competent, uh, competent nursing workforce to deliver the best care to older adults. They include Veronica Fitzgerald from Regis College, Tiara Green from Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Clarksville, Sarah Johnson from South Dakota State University, Alicia Mitchell from the University of Louisville, and Abigail Stein, Bryant and Stratton College. Finally, we have two new scholarships to announce this year. Dr. Pajarillo is joining the group on stage again to present the Edmund J.Y. Pajarillo Nursing Informatics Scholarship, which supports informatics and innovation in the use of data analysis and health information technology. Our winner this year is Catherine Quay from Columbia University. In addition, we would like to present the Cecilia Lou Verheyes Scholarship. This award aids nurses pursuing advanced degrees and careers as full-time nurse educators who are also the first in their family to pursue higher education and belong to a historically marginalized or excluded group. Our winner this year is Esperanza Gutierrez from the University of Rhode Island who is unable to join us today. Congratulations again to all of our scholarship recipients. We are really most grateful to all of our members, the 2022 Centers of Excellence, the NLN Academy inductees, and many partners who donated to the NLN Foundation in the past year who helped make these awards possible. So this year, the foundation was able to help 22 students, six more than last year. Our goal is to continue to increase the number of awards each year. This year, we're hoping to raise $5,000 before the Friday Gala to make this happen. We also want to acknowledge NLN Foundation Chair Dr. Patrick Robinson for his leadership on behalf of the foundation and the NLN. Thank you. We're not done yet. There is one more exciting award, this one for an NLN Constituent League. The Constituent League Excellence and in Innovation Award recognizes a league that has successfully implemented one or more innovations to support the NLN's mission and goals. This year's winner is, you ready? The New Jersey League for Nursing. The New, the New Jersey League showed exceptional ability to maintain their member enrollment through the COVID-19 pandemic and raise funds for scholarships. The League was also able to secure a grant from Community Health Connections for scholarships for three consecutive years. This is their second time winning the Innovation Award and here to accept the award on behalf of the New Jersey League for Nursing is Tracy Ortelli. Congratulations.
Thank you, Susan. Let's give a round of applause for Susan and for all the award winners. <laughs> Colleagues, following this session, the exhibits and posters are open during lunch. Please, please, please support our exhibitors as you check out their resources and discuss options for active learning and advanced degrees. If you are a dean or a director and did not RSVP for today's dean's lunch, we have a limited number of tickets still available on a first come, first serve basis. Please visit the NLN information desk now to get a ticket. The lunch begins today at 12.15. At 12.30, you can stop by a session on becoming this is for everybody who doesn't go to the luncheon, becoming a fellow in the Academy of Nursing Education. We don't want there to be any secrets. It should be very clear how, how one is actually eligible for that incredible honor. Then there are more concurrent sessions this afternoon with the NLN annual business meeting scheduled for 4 p.m. And I do want to correct the fact that I said yesterday that you had to scan before you entered. And then I had the audacity to say you had to scan as you leave. <laughs> no, that would be an interesting jam at the door. So we are now correcting that with only scan before you enter, and then you can get your CEUs. If you arrive a few minutes early, you'll be able to watch a seven-minute highlight reel from the recent Theater Lab performance in Washington, D.C. that gives a glimpse into the lives of nurse educators and elevates our voices. Your peers and colleagues, some of whom are at the summit this year, took part in this event. We hope you will be there. Finally, at 5.15 is a session hosted by NCSBN on Next Generation NCLEX Countdown to Lunch. Have a wonderful afternoon and evening. Thank you all again.